Flatliners is a 1990 science fiction horror film directed by Joel Schumacher. It stars Kiefer Sutherland, Julia Roberts, William Baldwin, Oliver Pratt, and Kevin Bacon, among others. It scored number one at the box office upon its release, but is it warranted? Well, let's find out. The premise of this film centers on five college students studying medicine who decide to try an experiment to find out what lies on the other side of life. How are they going to do this? Well, what they have done is they done is they set up a machine that one of them is hooked up to, one that slows their heartbeat to a stop so they quote-unquote die, while still maintaining their brain, brain activity and waiting for the others to get their heart beating again so they can recount their experience. Each one has differing results, but the experiment soon proves to have consequences as some of the characters start to have very disturbing hallucinations. Halluc- hallucinations of things they saw while they were flatlining. Things that are ghostly sh- shadows of their past come to punish them. Now, they must set out and right whatever wrongs they have done before the hallucinations get out of control. Now, this is an awesome premise. Even more amazing given how truly creative it is. I mean, for one, it is taking a superna- the supernatural premise of asking what comes after death and adds a science fiction twist to it. That I honestly thought was a refreshing way to combine those two genres. And also, it's just so much fun watching it all play out due to the endless possibilities of what these characters could experience since, as mentioned before, each character's experience with flatlining is different, so that kept it interesting enough to wonder what the other characters could possibly experience as well. There's also a surprisingly surprisingly great redemption story within this film since the characters are, you know, forced to confront the sins of their past. I give premise an A. It was truly unique and was executed in a very entertaining way. Acting in this film was probably the best I've seen in any of Schumacher's films next to Falling Down. I especially have to give props to Kiefer Sutherland. You could tell he has carried a lot of guilt for the horrible thing he did as a kid, which the guilt only got worse ever gets worse ever since doing the experiment. This is all evidenced by Sutherland's ability to, to demonstrate such raw emotion that you can truly start to see how much this is eating his character up, which ultimately made his character feel more tragic. All the other characters also do a fine job at demonstrating how demonstrating how this is affecting them, and the way they interacted did feel did feel genuine, like as if the, these are not actors but friends who have known each other for a long time. I give acting an A. It was probably some of the best in any of Schumacher's flicks. Now, special infect- effects in this are pretty good, because while there isn't anything too complex, they were still really cool to look at, especially with the way the afterlife was portrayed. It had such a dreamlike and complex feel to it that just felt so real since, as mentioned in my Ouija review, the afterlife is, is not something we fully understand, so this feels realistic due to how convoluted some of it is. Like, the way it is portrayed is legit, you know, what I imagine someone might see before they die. I give special effects an A-. minus. They weren't too prevalent in this movie, and I'm not even sure I would technically call them special effects, but the scenes where they are you know, prevalent were terrific since it did help to create an afterlife that felt genuinely real. Cinematography in this movie was, for the most part, all right. There were some fantastic cho- fantastic aerial shots at the beginning, as well as in the spirit world, as well as a gorgeous, yet somehow haunting, shot of a looming statue in the opening credits. But for the most part, the cinematography was fairly good, but nothing I would do- go too crazy over. I give cinematography a B plus. It was good in some areas, but decent overall. Finally, directing. As I said, this is one of my favorite Schumacher movies, and I definitely put it up there with his other films, such as The Lost Boys. And I think this is evidenced by how the story plays out. Not only is there so much to be revealed about the possibilities of the experiment, but also the characters overall. He just gave so much to unpack that I just could not stop watching until I knew more. And the premise is already really cool, but he expands on it by having each of the five students experience different things in the afterlife, which in turn gives us all subtle hints about them, each of them. This movie was also paced tremendously due, due to how much was there was to unpack with it. I give directing an A+. What Ju- Joel Schumacher did with it really did help since it didn't drag at all and was very en- engaging as a result. Overall, Flatliners is a very pleasurable watch due to how lively it is, in, in not only in terms of premise, but also acting with along with how the story plays out. There is also a surprisingly great theme of making peace with your past that is highly evidenced in this movie. It isn't too scary, although there are some fairly creepy moments concerning a kid wearing a red hoodie, but in the end, it's just a very entertaining watch with characters you will genuinely care about due to the struggles they are forced to overcome. I give Flatliners an A-. It truly is one of the best I've seen from Schumacher. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and sub for more content.